Hey, welcome back. So with me today, I have my Mac mini. Now I did already make a video on this. I showed me editing on this, doing some 4K editing, doing a bit of motion graphics, which I actually feel like I want to retouch on that and kind of revisit this device soon. But as you can tell in front of me as well, I have a couple of accessories that I wanted to share with you guys that the way I use my Mac mini, how I like to set things up and specifically the things that I use to keep myself not only organized, but also ready for work as again, I am a professional, so I do editing all the time and I gotta use the right tools that allow me to do the work that I do. And with that, the first device I wanna talk about is this, the Mac mini. So this is the base model that has eight gigabytes of RAM, 256 gigs of storage. And this device is actually capable of doing some pretty good work. Now, I don't use this device extensively for my work, but there are a couple use cases that I was able to use it for, which I want to discuss in a future video. But I do wanna state that if you are interested in this device, I highly advise you getting it. It is such a great tool. Um, and I would advise though getting 16 or 24 gigs of RAM as opposed to the eight, even though that itself already is a little bit problematic. But nonetheless, this is a great device that I like, and I think you guys would like it too. Now, device aside, I have other peripherals here that I use, so I do wanna talk about them real quick. Now, the first two that I wanna discuss are my keyboard and my mouse, as those are very important. So with that, here on my right side, I have this. This is the G502X Lightspeed. So I got the non-RGB white version. And the reason for that is because one, if you get the non-RGB version, which even though if you get the RGB, I think as long as you don't turn on the light, then it could last as long. But the point is, this mouse can last up to 140 hours of usage in just a single fold battery charge. Now, considering that my mouse hovers a lot between the home and my studio here, I wanted to be sure that no matter what, this can last for a long time before I even have to worry about the battery. You also have a nice little battery indicator if you need to know where you stand with that. But the fact that it can last that long was amazing. So I opted to get the non-RGB version just so I don't get tempted to use it. But the second thing I love about this mouse is that it finds charges via USB-C. If you guys haven't used a G502 Lightspeed, those did charge with a micro USB. So the fact that this is finally USB-C, one cord for everything, that's amazing. Now, moving on to the keyboard, I do have a Keychron K4 with brown switches. I actually only recently got this keyboard, maybe it's been about two to three weeks now, but I have to say it's been an absolute pleasure to use. I did get brown switches because here at the studio, I would like some, some little bit of that clickiness that you get, but I just didn't need it to be too loud like you do with the blue switches. So I opted to get the browns, but the thing about this too is I also have it configured for Mac usage, considering that I do use a Mac Studio here at the studio. And this keyboard, like I said, it's been great. You don't have to spend as much money considering that this costs $100 on a keyboard, but I did it for the fact that I just, I do like keyboards, I do like keychrons. So this is definitely what I use here at the studio as well as at home for my gaming. But if you guys are interested in the keychron, I will leave that linked down below. So now, keyboard and mouse out of the way. The next thing for the Mac Studio that I would advise you to get is an external storage. So if you got the one that I did, which again, it's only 256 gigs of storage, so that's not gonna last you very long, then I would advise you to get an external storage. And with that here, I have this. So this is a SanDisk Extreme external SSD that connects via USB-C. Here at the studio with Tom, we have been using a variation of these here at the studio for over like three to four years now. The speeds are phenomenal. This thing feels really rugged. You can get a compact one, one that's like pretty much smaller. This can easily fit in a book bag. This could even fit in like a little pocket of a jacket. You know, the fact that this is very portable and it feels nice is great. Now, the fact that this also connects via USB-C is great because you can also then in relation, connect this to the back on one of your Thunderbolt 4 ports on your Mac Studio. Now, as great as these are, I know there's a lot of people that have hard drives that are connected via USB, which in the back, we have two ports available. Now, if you connect it via USB, you're gonna have only one port available, which could be fine, but for example, like I use a Logitech and with this mouse in particular, I do like to use the receiver. I like that for the consistency of the connection, even though this does have a really good Bluetooth connectivity, but if you do end up having to use a port and then let's say you wanna connect the keyboard which uses a port and then you wanna connect the mouse, a hard drive, you're gonna need more than two ports. So with that, then I would recommend getting 
one of these. Now this one in particular is in a seal USB hub and all you do is connect it to the back of the device and you go from having only two USB ports available to now having five. This is very important in case you have a microphone you wanna connect, a webcam, your mouse, your keyboard, an external drive. So just, I really recommend having one of these handy. You always wanna be prepared in case you have some limitations on your device, like I do with the Mac mini. And I would advise you to do the same and look into one of these. Now, let's say you wanna connect something to the device using the USB-C port, but you don't have an adapter available to you. Well, with that, I would really recommend looking into getting some like these. These are from a company called Syntec, and all you do is you just connect a USB device into this, and it'll convert it from a USB-A to a USB-C. Now, given the fact that with the Mac Mini, if you upgrade it, you can get more USB-C ports and not USB-As, maybe you just wanna connect a device through a USB-C port and leave your As available. Now, a use case for for this is actually like myself. So what I do with these actually is connect it to one of these. Now this is a Wise brand. This is a CFX and SD card reader. I have to use this to get the footage from this camera into here. And the way I do that is I actually just connect it via USB-C just because I want my USB-A ports available for my mouse and keyboard. And then also this will just make it a little more stable in the connection I have when I'm transferring the data. It never hurts to have a couple of these adapters around in the studio or at home in your office. So I really would advise you to look into these. And now the last thing I can talk about is my display, even though I don't feel it really matters. I mean, as long as you have a display to do the work, then you're gonna be fine. But considering that you do have an HDMI port, that's actually where I plug in my displays if I need them. And with that, you know, for here at the studio, I do use a BenQ display. Uh, you know, you don't have to get something as fancy, but again, given that I am a professional, I do like to invest in really nice color accurate displays, and that's the one I'm choosing right now. And so that's gonna be it. Those are the accessories that I use with this Mac mini studio. I would advise you to look into any of these or something along the lines of these, just to keep yourselves a little more organized and also just to keep things handy in case you need them. But overall, I mean, if you have a Mac mini, feel free to experiment, find stuff that works, find ways to utilize all these ports in the back or to extend them. You know, you definitely want this to last a long time, but hopefully something I suggested here has given you an inspiration and then you can just take things from there. And so that's gonna be it. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you guys are interested in anything here that I had mentioned, I will link them down below just so you guys can go ahead and take a look yourselves and maybe compare and contrast anything that you're looking to buy. Feel free to follow me on Twitter. I do like to retweet job postings on there if you are an editor or a creator. Uh, but above all, it's just the only social media site I am pretty active on. So feel free to check it out. But other than that, have a great rest of your day.